So uh, we'll, we've, we've talked about the Society of Children's Book Writers and Illustrators. I wanted to also ask you about the Rhyming Revolution, your conference that you're running. Um, starting with, when did you decide that you needed to run your own conference, and why did you want to do it separate from the Society of Children's Book Writers and Illustrators? Well, you know, back after my first book came out, um, you know, when I didn't know at all what I was doing <laughs> as a writer, but I had this book, right? All um, evidence to the contrary. Because <laughs> it's going pretty well. You got a book. You're it's, out there selling Yeah, it's so far. You know, I am that person that says, yes, I know how to do it. And then I figure it out, right? So, um, so I wrote the book and then I had to figure out how to go about publishing and marketing and all of that. But um, I'm also not afraid to say no. And I usually figure out, you know, what it is that needs to be done. Um, but I had taken a an all-day webinar, um, and it was on platform. And I it was it was because people kept talking about platform, and I didn't really understand what that meant. And this has been a good amount of years ago. Um, and so basically, at that point, um, that's when social media was, to me, it was very new. Like, I had probably six Facebook friends, and they were my relatives you know <laughs> um and it was talking about how you have to sort of create this social media presence and you need to figure it out what it is that's your thing and that then can become um, a way that you can become known um, and so your book is out there, but you know what? There are lots of books out there. <laughs> and there are lots of books in your genre out there and lots of books in your genre by people all over the world. And so why would people buy your book? You have to figure out what it is that you can do to make your name and your title of your book and the, the topic of your book important. And so what I always love to do, even though my first book was completely nonfiction, The History of Evansville, my second book, also completely nonfiction, The History of the Biography of a Jockey, um, my third book was What is My Passion and My Happy Place. It was written in rhyme. And it's a rhyming picture book about the Santa statues. It's called Santa's Gift. And so that, being a kindergarten teacher, I understand the importance of rhyme for kids with their language development and phonemic awareness. And it, it's just a mnemonic device. And so it helps them understand and remember um, and they're learning language when they're hearing and listening to rhyme because they're not reading it, right? Like kids are, you know, five-year-olds, many five-year-olds are not reading yet. And so they are listening to it, but they can make the connections with rhyming words. And so as a kindergarten teacher and developmental therapist, I understand the importance of it for their brain and um, their just just understanding language. Um, but as a writer, to me, it's fun to write. It's To me, it's like writing um, a challenge or like, the, like doing a jigsaw puzzle or a sudoku or um, just it, the challenge of making all of the components work together to tell a story is what I like to do. And so that's where Rai Pai Bomo, Rhyming Picture Book Month, that's where that came from. Because I thought, you know, if I'm, I had an agent ask me um, many years ago, she said, I, I know you like to write rhymes. She said, but have you ever studied poetry? And I hadn't. I had never studied poetry. My background is in, in early childhood education. Um, and I had, you know, I had no background in English or language. And so I thought, you know, she's right. Like, if I'm going to have this as my platform, I really need to have a really solid understanding of it. And so as I started studying poetry and poetic techniques and everything that was involved in that, I thought, you know, this could be my platform. And so April is National Poetry Month, but there was no um, event for writers in April. Um, there are many writers challenges out there um, for writers like NaNoWriMo's coming up here in November. It's National Novel Writing Month. Um, back also in November, uh, Tara Lazar had Picture Book Idea Month. It was Peebo Idmo. Um, and so there are lots of other ones now, but at that time there was nothing in April. And that was National Poetry Month. So that became Rhyming Picture Book Month. Um, now, we sort of threw in poetry, too, in the beginning. But as the more and more followers I got, which I think we're near 1,000 followers right now on Facebook, in our, our private Facebook group, um, 
I sort of had to narrow that down because either I could do poetry or I could do rhyming picture books. It was hard to, to be able to do both. And so I would have bloggers um, talk about how to write in rhyme. And honestly, it's not even about the rhyme. As, as a professional writer, it's about the meter. Um, and if you don't know what meter is, you need to study it if you want to write rhyming picture books. Um, but meter is the stress syllables of a sentence or a stanza. And so that needs to be a consistent pattern throughout the entire manuscript. And so if it's stressed, unstressed, unstressed, stressed, that, that's a pattern. And that is called meter. And so that needs to be consistent throughout. And even though the ending rhyming words rhyme, if they don't make sense and your story is following the rhyming word instead of what makes sense as a story, then that's wrong. And so basically what I started to do was explain to people how to do rhyming picture books professionally because editors and agents constantly at conferences would say, uh, well, we don't accept rhyme. And that's because they get so much terrible, horrible, no good, very bad rhyme all the time <laughs> because people who think as a new writer, they think, oh, well, everything has to rhyme because that's for children. Well, they don't understand meter and they don't understand the concept of what needs to be in an actual picture book. And there is a very definitive, um, you know, map of what needs to be in it. It needs to have a, a, a great hook, and it needs to have tension and three points of tension and increasing tension to a peak moment. And then the child in the story needs to solve the problem, and then you have a satisfying ending, and, and that's called an arc. And so if you don't understand those things, um, that's sort of why... I created Rhyming Picture Book Month, which later became Rhyme Revolution. And so it was about if you're going to write in rhyme, this is how you need to do it. And if you're not going to do it this way, please don't do it because you're making it harder for the rest of us to get published writing rhyme. Um, and so I'm clogging up the works with your terrible rhymes. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And also, you know, what I started to explain to people is when you go to a conference and an editor says, we don't accept rhyme, that's not true. They do, but they know that people that write professionally understand that, and they submit it anyway. They don't want people that don't know the business or the professional aspects of it, they don't want them to submit. And so that's a very important little, you know, little clue is that, you know, please go to Rhyme Revolution. We have all kinds of archival. We've been doing this for, I guess, about seven years now, and so there's lots and lots of archived um, blog posts where people can just go back and read, you know, what it is and how to do it. And, and, but there are some of us that sort of get it and I can't necessarily explain why I love writing in rhyme. Um, to me, it's fun. It's also fun to read rhyme to kids. It's fun for kids to listen to rhyme. Um, but it's, it's there's just a joy that I find when trying to make everything work, you know, and honestly, I think it's harder than writing a novel. And a lot of people laugh, laugh at that because they don't necessarily understand the parameters that we have to go through to write in rhyme. You know, you have to have a, a, an amazing story, no matter what. Um, yes, the rhyming words are important, but a first grader can write rhyme. So it's not about the quality necessarily of the rhyming words, but it's about the story, the meter, and the rhyme. And that all has to work, and it has to be interesting and funny, and the hook, you know, and, and the ending has to make them want to read it again. And it, there, there's just a whole lot involved. And so people that have never done it before don't necessarily understand the challenges involved. And so that that's why I created the platform. So how long does it take an expert like you head of the, the rhyme revolution. Um, how long does it take you to write a rhyming picture book and be satisfied with it? You know, it's interesting. Um, sometimes it comes. Sometimes as a writer, you're just in that zone and it comes and very few words change from the very beginning when you get it down to the very end. Um, and Santa's gift is a perfect example of that. I tried for about four weeks to write Santa's gift and I had this rhythm in my head and that seemed to be what was speaking to me and I tried to write it in that rhythm and it was not working at all 
and so I would put it away and then I'd work on it again and it, it wasn't working and I'd put it away and I'd step back for a couple weeks. And then the day I wrote it, I actually went and sat on the Ohio River um, with my computer and it literally came out almost all in one full sweep. Uh, has very little has changed since then. And what's so crazy is it's in the exact meter that I was trying to write it in. And by the time I finally wrote it that way, I wasn't even thinking about it anymore. It was just internal. I do have a musical background. I played in um, um, band in grade school and in high school. Um, and so I think that definitely aids in my meter ability um because it's like if somebody's a good dancer they have a great rhythm well you have to have a great rhythm to be a writer of rhyme as well um and it can be taught it certainly can um but it's a whole lot harder to teach somebody who doesn't have good rhythm how to write in rhyme than if they do have a good rhythm <laughs> internally um and so i you know to answer your question santa's gift honestly i probably wrote that in about 45 minutes and very little has changed since then. Um, and other picture books, I would say, you know, work on bits and pieces that can take a couple of days to a couple of weeks. But for me, most of the time, either it comes or it doesn't. Um, and if it's not coming, I just put it away because the struggle and the frustration of really just trying to force it doesn't work for me. Um, I wish I could say that I was somebody that sat down at my computer every morning at 8 a.m. and I wrote. But I'm not. <laughs> um, I'm somebody that if I if I get an and I have a running list of ideas in my phone of titles or concepts that I just will it, you know it'll come across me typically when I'm driving. Um, a lot of times if I'm scrolling through Facebook in the evening just relaxing, I have a um, in Facebook you can save images, and so I have hundreds of images that says cool idea. And those are meaning cool picture book ideas. And so um, I wish I could tell you that I had time to go back through all of those, but I haven't yet. <laughs> um, but but those things sometimes, you know, writing a book isn't necessarily just sitting at a computer writing. A lot of times writing a book is just sitting and thinking. And so I do a lot of thinking when I'm driving. I do a lot of thinking when I'm in the shower, or when I'm laying in bed, ready to fall asleep at night. And so those ideas are percolating. And once I figure out the beginning and the middle and the peak moment of tension and then the solution and I come up with characters, you know, I'm a very visual writer um, and I'm also a closet illustrator. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, yeah. I don't like to tell people that often because it, feel like, it feels like a lot of pressure. Um, I have no training in illustration whatsoever, but I've always been very um, artistic and I love to do crafts and um, I did pr present a portfolio at the Los Angeles SCBWI conference this year. And it was horrifying <laughs> to put yourself out there like that. Was it horrifying know? in a way that's different from having put your books out there? Oh, it's so much worse. Yeah, it was so much worse. But I, it's like I told somebody, you know, it's like writing a first draft of something and putting it out, out on a table for hundreds of people to flip through. That's what it felt like to me because I had no... I have no illustrator critique group. It was just me putting some illustrations that I thought told stories out there. And so will I do it again? Maybe. Um, but I do think that I, I write very visually. Um, and so I think that definitely helps me, you know, to sort of imagine what those characters look like. But there is nothing more exciting than to have a picture book come to life when you start to see the illustrations from that illustrator. Especially if you really connect with that person, it's like, oh, it's exactly what I was thinking, you know. And so that, that to me has been the most rewarding thing is to see the illustrations from a story that I've written come to life.